There's beauty out there, a lot of beauty. It'd be good if he could see it. But if he can't see it, just imagine it. And imagine how wrong it would be to go out there and just take them out. For no good reason. The threat's there, but it sure ain't the horses. I actually think very few Canadians realize what a beautiful population of wild horses we have. This population in Alberta is of great interest, I think, to Canadians in that it's one of the few places in Canada that you can come and reliably see wild horses just an hour and a half outside of Calgary. I think that the Alberta wild horses have a very unique look about them. They don't look like any other wild horses because of the, that sturdy, sort of strong, very, very muscular look about them. The Alberta wild horses are of significant importance to Alberta as a reminder of the past that we honour and as an aesthetic that we can't afford to lose. So few Albertans even know there's wild horses in Alberta. It's fascinating, really. <laughs> when we first got involved with wild horses back when there was a large roundup at the Suffield Air Force Base, and we made an attempt to stop that through a court action, but very quickly the government moved in and rounded up those horses and some were adopted out and some went to slaughter. And since that time, there's been ongoing government sanctioned culling across the province of Alberta. Why are they being culled? What, why is the government trying to get rid of them? It came down to the ranchers and the land use. It's competition competition for land and competition for resources. So here in Alberta, the ranchers use what we call crown land. So they will lease crown land for, I don't know, a few cents, and they turn their cattle out so they don't have to feed them for the summer. The ranchers feel that the horses are taking away from their livelihood by they're eating some of the food that their cattle could be grazing on. That's essentially free food for their cattle. If it was any other industry in Canada, this wouldn't be happening. So about uh, five years ago, we initiated a campaign where we engaged Wayne McCrory to look at all of the evidence that the government was relying on when they said that the horses were overpopulated and making arguments that they were somehow creating some damage. So we said, okay, you know, that could be true. Uh, let's look at it. Show us where this is happening. We want to come out and look at it. If need be, bring out a range ecologist with us and just evaluate it and send us your report, show us those sites. 
And basically the, the lead person in Edmonton said, well, we really don't have any sites to show you. And we said, well, why not? Well, it, they just wouldn't answer that question. In no case can it be proven that the horses have degraded environmental integrity anywhere near the degree to which overgrazing by cattle has done and the clear cutting, which is just horrific. There's an entity called the Feral Horse Advisory Committee that essentially says, okay, well, this is how many horses there are, this is how many, this is how many horses we think we should cull this year. The ranchers sit on this advisory committee, and some of the ranchers that sit on that committee are also issued capture permits. So they profit off of capturing these wild horses. Rather than calling them wild, they'll call them feral horses because it's easier to get rid of a feral animal than a wild animal. Because it evolved in North America, wild horse is not really a feral animal. The Spaniards who brought them to North America in the early 1500s were really reintroducing a species that evolved here. The horse is basically North America's gift to the world. It is here in North America that um, the uh, family of Equida, as we might say, actually originated and um, uh, 60 million years ago. The health of uh, an ecosystem is based on its biodiversity. So there's, it makes no sense to get rid of these wild horses. And there's been studies that have shown that they actually contribute to the ecosystem. Cattle never evolved in North America. They're not that related to our wild bison. You know, other than for economic reasons, don't fit into the ecosystem the way uh, the wild horses do. They dig up frozen over snow uh, to make uh, grazing available for deer and elk. They also can greatly contribute uh, to wildfire prevention by uh, eating up uh, dried grass. They chew off the grass, meaning they don't destroy the roots when they eat it. So the chance of damaging the grasses is far less than cattle. You got the lead stallion, and you got an older mare, and then the nucleus with them. And so by nature, they're a herd animal. It doesn't just continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. There's the self, the self-regulating. Wild horses have incredibly beautiful relationships. Nudging and grooming and compassion towards each other and stallions doing everything they can to defend their family band. Foals nudging moms sisters, cousins, aunts, all living together. Like human families, we, wild horses are no different. Family members play uh, their own social role in horse societies. Older members um, discipline younger ones. So if you uh, cull older animals, you end up with uh, young stallions that are not socialized. The horses tend to be in separate bands up to maybe 15. That kind of behavior prevents them from overgrazing and starving themselves out of house and home. Unlike turning 400 cattle loose on the range that are all gonna to stick together and overgraze riparian areas. Currently, the Alberta horses are the only ones with absolutely no protections. The Sable Island horses have some protection by federal policy. The horses in Saskatchewan have some legal protection provincially in the Bronson Forest. And the Chilcotin horses have another kind of protection. In 2002, the Hunnigatine First Nations created um, Western Canada's first wild horse refuge which is about as large as Banff National Park. 
you're talking about a fabulous intact ecosystem with all of the natural predators like grizzly bears and wolves. And it should be a model for the Alberta foothills where they should actually have some similar uh, tribal parks or wild horse refuges where the horses are guaranteed there to be there for a long time. Wild horses are very crucial to Indigenous people. The spirit of the grandfather horse is integral in our spirituality. They have the gift to foresee and they have the gift to protect as well as to teach. Spiritually, they're very much a part of the environment. They take care of the waterways where the horses find water. They always manage to tramp down the vegetation that would have stopped the water from running. And nothing lives without water. When the government says there's too many of these horses, I don't think so. They were meant to be just like us and just like everything else around us. You know, there's a process of life, a cycle of life. So nature itself looks after her children, her horses. If you take away their family, they are going to grieve. To get us together and say, this is what's going to happen. We never get a chance to have our input. We've been kept quiet for 150 years. And so now the horses are being treated the same way. So rightfully, we need to acknowledge the horse. That horse is a crucial and integral part of Mother Nature's ecosystem. Wild horse advocates around the world and photographers, they're using their cameras to raise awareness for wild horses. The tourism potential for wild horses here in Alberta is uh, vastly underutilized. To see wild horses is truly a magical and spiritual experience. Go out and photograph them, go out and view them, go out and see how beautiful they are. Uh, take your children out. They're just majestic. Alberta is horse country. We owe a lot to the horse. As long as we keep believing what we do about our own special place as a species and our own special, unique place on the planet, and as long as we see ourselves as in a dominant position to do what we wish with other creatures, we are putting all ecosystems in trouble, including our own. This is a species that has served us for thousands of generations. We owe it to them to provide them the protections they need to live wild and free in Canada.